Brian, thank you so much for being with us today. If you don't mind, take a moment, introduce yourself, talk about Conavi and uh, your role with the organization. Thank you very much. Yeah, Conavi Medical is a Canadian-based medical scale-up company, and I'm the uh, one of the founders as well as the president and CEO of the company. Perfect. Thank you. So, Brian, did you develop your interest in technology at an early age, or was there a specific event that triggered your interest in medical devices? My father is a bit of a technophile. I think he'll be readily uh, he'll readily recognize that in any public forum. And he also had a fair amount of entrepreneurship uh, in terms of his interests uh, as he was as he was going through his career. And some of that rubbed off on me. And I uh, I wanted to do something that had some social good with my technical skills as an engineer. So I started off as a computer engineer, and then I started designing medical devices and ultimately made a transition to going into clinical practice as a cardiologist, as well as an entrepreneur with an engineering background. Wow, sounds like your father was quite the inspiration. So, shifting from you and moving into Conavi, what's the story behind Conavi? How did it get, how did it get started? Certainly, when I, when I finished my medical training in California, I moved back to Toronto, where there was a starting point of uh, medical technology community, uh, but it hadn't hit any critical mass. And yet there was extremely strong research in imaging in, uh, in the Toronto area. And so that was an opportunity for me to strengthen my engineering skills while I went through my clinical training. And uh, I met with a lot of people who knew how to design optical systems and ultrasound systems and had achieved some pretty important milestones, uh, both from an academic research perspective, but also from a commercial success perspective. And so the hospital that I'm affiliated with at the University of Toronto is called Sunnybrook. And there are a number of companies that have done well out of Sunnybrook. Uh, and that's been a very good environment for me to join in order to um, pursue my mission of developing technologies that might be helpful for people while creating some economic activity uh, uh, for the people that contribute to these efforts. With Conavi, at what point did you realize, wow, we have something here? We're developing a few different technologies and um, we're using our expertise in ultrasound and optical imaging and we have a fair number of clinical co-founders. So we had a few ideas around how to make some interesting ways of collecting 3D images, but we knew how to do them with ultrasound and we knew how to do them with optical and optical imaging. And so we ended up actually coming up with a fairly rich patent portfolio that covered interesting ways to take 3D and 2D images of structures using ultrasound and optical imaging, but we also ended up with some very interesting ways on how to combine ultrasound and optical imaging together. And uh, I think as a result of the expertise that we had from both the scientists and the clinicians that co-founded the company, we saw a multitude of opportunities to create almost a new imaging modality in many respects in terms of 3D intracardiac ultrasound, and then a, a very competitive and appealing way to combine ultrasound and optical resolution with very high resolution for looking at coronary plaques. So we almost ended up ended up stumbling upon a few opportunities that we then had to prioritize before we took steps forward. When you're faced with that, how do you prioritize technology? We took a look at the competitive landscape and uh, did a little bit of forecasting in terms of where we would end up in terms of intellectual property and strategic advantage and where some of the opportunities might be um, emerging as opposed to more established. And just to give you an example, for our 3D intracardiac echo technology, we knew there were um, significant growth trends in electrophysiology and structural heart disease. And uh, we thought that there would be a large number of clinical applications that would be, would be enabled by our technology. And we had a very high level of confidence in our intellectual property position um, because we were able to survey people who were experts and, and it really shocked them as to how new what we had developed um, was going to be. So that's what led us to actually make that decision. Um, so I think, to answer your question in short, um, make decisions with as much um, expert involvement uh, with the information we have at hand and you know, maybe make different decisions if we were to do it over again, but certainly with the information we had at the time, I, I feel comfortable with the decisions that we made and, uh, and there are advantages to that as well. 
makes a lot of sense. You mentioned milestones earlier. Mm -hmm. So what was the last milestone that Conavi achieved? We are structuring ourselves to be an international developer and supplier of image guidance technologies for minimally invasive procedures. And we are aiming to do that where we are direct to the customer in North America. But in order to justify the expense and the effort and to, to capitalize really on what we've built, you need to be an international company. And, and it's difficult to grow the company into a self-standing, independent international organization um, uh, on a meager budget. So um, we've been very successful and very thankful um, uh, about opportunities that have come to us where we can partner with a premier partner in Japan and a premier partner in China uh, to distribute our technologies, to manage our regulatory, um, our regulatory affairs in those jurisdictions. And so we're very grateful for those partnerships. And the most recent one uh, that, that we established was with uh, a, a company in China uh, to, um, to coordinate our distribution and regulatory affairs in what is the second largest medical device market in the world. Sounds like a lot of milestones, not just one. So congratulations. Thank you. What milestone or achievement would make you feel like you finally made it? Sometimes people introduce Canavi or myself or some of my co-founders as successful, but I don't think any of us are really going to rest on our laurels until we feel confident that we've achieved some clinical impact for the patients uh, that, uh, that we've developed this technology for. So um, I think that uh, when we have some strong data, and it'll come off initially as some anecdotal stories, and we already have a few of those where we had an impact on a procedure uh, that um, changed the decision making or the way that a physician did the procedure. Um, but we also, you know, we really want to evolve that over time to develop a high level of confidence that what we're doing is providing benefit to patients around the world. And, and so it's a, it's a lofty uh, goal. Um, certainly there's also a, a need to, um, uh, to provide some financial rewards to the people that have been involved with the company. I think that if we focus on being clinically successful, technologically competent and operate with a high level of integrity, then I think that we can achieve international success and then, and then the rest of that hopefully will, will follow in due course. That mentality is exactly why I'm in this industry. It's all about improved patient care and improved quali quality of life. And I dedicate my life and I can see that you've dedicated your life to that as well. So I wanna thank you for that. Thank you. Can you walk us through the journey of a patient? We are an image guidance company. And so our objective is to make procedures that are established or emerging uh, safer, faster, with better outcomes. Those are our goals. And uh, the advantage of developing an image guidance technology is that the development and the regulatory pathways and the overall expense to introduce the technology um, is, a, is a little bit lower uh, than what it would be for a new therapy, especially a therapy that was an implant, for example. But if you can um, make those therapies more effective, then you're on a path where you're having impact on patient care that's improving um, their outcomes, hopefully. And uh, I think that um, the remuneration is already in place for a lot of the therapies that our technologies would be using, so it overcomes an issue in terms of having to establish reimbursement in most jurisdictions. And, and so I think that we're trying to make the therapies better by allowing people to see the anatomy, to um, make sure they put the right size device in the right place in the right patient. And, and I, that paradigm of image guidance is, is one of the themes within personalized and precision medicine that is getting a fair amount of attention around the world. Wonderful. What has been the most surprising aspect of your journey so far? Everything takes longer than you expect. Uh, you know, we are confident by nature. We are optimistic by nature. Um, and so everything takes a bit longer than we initially forecast, but we're doing everything we initially forecast. And we are having the successes that we sought out to achieve. Um, and uh, we're able to, uh, to attract people to the company that are interested in the mission uh, that uh, the founders of, of the company sought out to, um, uh, to pursue. So um, I think uh, it's a very rewarding and interesting um, uh, path uh, for us. And um, I, I anticipate that the next few years are gonna be equally interesting and, and tremendous 
learning and growth opportunities for everyone that's involved in the company. Looking ahead, what is CoNavi's 2018 priorities? So we have our first technology, which is already approved, and it's uh, an intracardiac echo technology. Um, it's entered into a market where there's some very mature uh, and powerful players. And um, we're able to do some useful things with that technology, but there are some areas where we can make some pretty substantial improvements with it, and that will take a fair uh, amount of time uh, for that to evolve, although we're well on our way in many respects uh, to do so. So we're going to be gaining clinical experience with that first technology. Um, our second technology uh, is um, reasonably highly sought after by uh, a number of people to use in the clinical setting. And we're um, in the process of, of uh, going through the regulatory approval uh, steps. We already have approval to do our first human study in Canada with that technology. Um, it takes ultrasound and optical and looks at plaque and stents and other things within the coronary anatomy to resolve things that people can't see on an angiogram. And there are three million angioplasty and stenting procedures done around the world every year. And if we can um, uh, get uh, regulatory approvals that we're seeking and some clinical experience with that, I think that's going to add a tremendous amount of momentum uh, to the company. And uh, uh, for me, as an interventional cardiologist, I think um, will be great to see in terms of having that come into the clinical milieu. Perfect. Thank you. Well, again, I wish you the best, and I can't wait to see what you come up with next. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Take care.